Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm talking driver and a draw. I am pretty sure you're going to learn some big keys to hitting that ripper of a draw down the fairway. I've got a few golf balls on the floor to illustrate what I'd like you to understand today. These circles of golf ball are the flight that we're going to see in the sky. So the ball is fundamentally, we are looking for the ball to bend to the left. Now I'm pretty sure that most of you, when you're aiming down the middle of the fairway, which is something that you should never do, really, you're trying to get the club to swing from the inside, to start the ball to the right, and then to get it to draw back because 99% of the time I see guys and girls out there trying to loop their golf club inside so you can hit the inside quarter of the golf ball to approach it and then close the face over and then hit a draw. Well, let me tell you, anyone that draws the golf ball does not set up to the middle of the fairway. They're always aiming down the right half of the fairway. When was the last time you saw on the PGA Tour golf or the Live Golf where a guy aims right and doesn't bend the ball back, or aims left and doesn't bend the ball back. Or when you see one of the shot tracers, when was the last time you saw the ball take off and land exactly on the same point? It just doesn't happen. So nobody is playing straight, everybody is playing bend. The only job that we have to do at the moment of contact to make that ball have right to left bend, and I don't give a monkeys whether you see it as a push draw, a pull draw, a straight draw, <sighs> labeling I'm not interested in. The only thing I'm interested in is you producing a club face closed to your path. So this box here, the face to path value, that box should have some form of negative number on it. And then we'll deal with where we're going to line that up with later. So, at address, the golf ball trajectory, when I'm aiming straight, I'm looking for this ball to have a bend left, that's all. Now, the radius of the golf swing is a lot flatter in its circumference than the radius of the handle. So these balls here are where my handle is going to try to move as I swing the golf club at impact and beyond. I'd then like to draw your attention to the fact, and I don't want to get too caught up in too many balls here, but I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that when my handle reaches the line of the golf ball, my handle is going to continue to arc around me. And what I'd like you to reference is the fact that this handle is going to the left. That club head is still swinging out to the ball. So this would be reference the inside path of a golf, golf club. If I then move the handle out to the right, I've got the handle going out to the right and I've got a face that's opening even, even more. If you do this, you will be a heel striker and you'll be someone that hits the ball down the right wing and you'll hit down on the golf ball. <clears throat> the handle tracking to the left gives me the chance to still strike the golf ball from the inside or approaching the ball from the inside. I really don't like this inside out analogy and I only say inside because I know that's how most of you see it. But the handle is working to the left the head is working from the inside of the ball line. And as we move through, now all of a sudden, this handle has really moved a long way to the left and the club now starts to catch up and starts to arc back in. Therefore, that being said, when I aim straight here and I make my handle track down this line and I aim straight and I know that with a decent grip and club face orientation, I know that if I meet the ball late enough in the arc, i.e. level with my left foot, beyond my left foot. As long as my handle's tracking in, I know that that club face is going to point some form of left. And with a bit of luck, some form of left to your path. 
Let's hit one. So ball is in the forward position. Again, depending on a few factors, you've got to play with this. Either inside your left foot, as far forwards as outside your left pinky toe. But I'm going to be on the left toe of mine. I'm going to aim straight and I'm just going to swing and hit and I'm going to make sure my handle feels like it tracks around on these inner golf balls. So, the club path of that golf shot was dead straight. Now on this occasion, my face relative to my path was one degree open. My path line was dead straight, even though you saw and you felt, or I felt, my handle trying to go down this line. I hit it slightly out the toe. The ball fortunately had bend on it because of that, that ingredient. And if you've seen any of my videos, you'll have appreciated how much gear effect has an effect on the flight of the golf ball. I'm gonna go again and hopefully I'm gonna create a slightly more closed face to path. What I might wanna to do to help me do that is nudge the ball a bit further forwards. It'll make me hit up more. I was already 3.6 up, but I'm gonna put the ball a bit further forwards, which will help me close the face even more because I'm gonna catch it on the way back in. That one definitely went left. So I caught the ball on the way back in. You can see my path line was nuts and bolts the same as the last one. It was 1.6 across it but because I moved the ball further forwards, I caught the ball on the way back in. Now, all of a sudden, I've made the face, because I caught the ball slightly more on the way back in, the club unloaded a bit more, which is why I hit a bit more up at five degrees. The ball now had bend to the left. Mission accomplished. I've now got bend to the left, like I did on the last shot, but that came a bit more because of the toe strike. But I've got bend to the left. Now all I do is I orientate these circles that I've made with these golf balls more to the right. So I'm still going to make my handle feel like it's moving to the left. I'm still gonna feel like the club head is moving to the left of me. But this time, instead of aiming straight, I'm now gonna to aim to the right. Now, if you practice enough, you will start to get a flavor of how much bend your golf ball has in the sky when you're aiming straight and what that looks like as a side total. If you know those two things, or should I say, if you simply know how much your side total is and the way you'll find that out is that I'm aiming down the middle of the fairway here. I'm aiming at the um, spike at the end here. It has got a name, but it, it's lost on me at the moment. I'm aiming down the center line here. Now I saw the ball bend to the left Therefore, the gap that I've created between the end point and the, the start line, I need, I'm gonna split that in two, and I'm now gonna aim that far to the right. So I'm now gonna aim up the right here and create exactly the same golf shot. But I'm still visualizing it as the face looking left of my path line. My path line in this orientation is gonna be depicted by where I'm aiming. So the ball, up to the right hand side, uh, should I say my alignment is up to the right hand side, the ball is still far forwards. Now, if you're feeling the handle, the club head, and my body all trying to move around to the left, and then you see the golf ball making the same bend, does that all not match up in terms of feels? Compared to aiming straight, trying to get the golf club to approach the ball from the inside, my body's trying to rotate left, you're trying to swing the club out to the right, and then you're trying to close the club face over. Well, good luck with that, my friends. Because <laughs> that just won't work on a reliable basis. I absolutely promise you. So if you've ever worked on trying to get the golf club inside, you're doing yourself an injustice, I promise you. So we aim up to the right, we put the ball in the right position, forwards. Now I'm gonna make myself feel like the handle can still go back down and around. I'm gonna make the club head and the club face feel like it works around. Let's see how we go. So I still felt it all move around me, all around me, and there she is. Boom, straight back onto target. 
there was no part of me that made me want to feel like I wanted to swing more from the inside. And the beauty with this is that the more a golfer aims to the right of their target and they get their head around the fact they're trying to make the golf club move around to the left, the less you'll try to rotate the face over because no longer are you having to deal with a face that's coming in open because you're trying to push, push the path to the right. The path was 11.6 degrees from the inside. It was only 11.6 degrees from the inside because I aimed nuts and bolts 10 degrees to the right. I preset that. But all I did was when I came back, it gave me the flexibility to feel that when I move around the golf ball, the face will come with me. The face was only three degrees close to the path. It had a little bit too much curve on it because I just whipped it slightly out the toe. But that's a preference of mine because I'd much rather hit it out there and see a slight draw than hitting it out the heel and hitting it a slight fade because the closer you get to the zero face to path value, the more susceptible you are to a heel or toe strike. If you hung out with a really hook face to path value, you could, as a golfer, get away with hitting out the heel. You would actually alleviate some of the, the draw spin that you see. If you were an open face to path guy, you could uh, hang out a bit more out the toe. But invariably, open face to guys, guys and girls are coming from the inside because the face is open and therefore you're a heel striker because you're pushing the handle out to the right. So you see the ball bend to the right, you think that the path is the way to resolve it, you swing from the inside, you push the path more out to the right, you hit it more out the heel because the sweet spot's going away from you, face is open, you hit it more right. I'm saying that fast because it is so logical, it's so simple, but when you get caught up in these magical mystery tours of guys and girls that can't play the game, when they're coaching and they felt certain things that hasn't made it work for them, it's like the blind leading the blind. So you've got to understand, I don't mean to be disparaging to people because everybody's trying to help you in the best way possible. The best of their abilities. And that is fantastic because that's passion and enthusiasm. But if it's not making you any better, you've got to think about what might be happening and it's not because you've got the inability to do it. And I hear it all the time. Oh, it's a mental problem. Uh, mentally, I'm shot to pieces. I, I don't know what I'm doing. So nothing to do with that. It's because when you believe in something, you then apply it, the shot doesn't come off, you think it's the right information, you then think you've got a psychological battle where well, you have. Because what's happening is your brain thinks and tries to get you to do one thing that believes it's going to make the ball do another thing. When the two don't actually physically work, you then think you've got a mental issue because you can't repeat it. But the reality is when it doesn't work, the brain's going, well, this isn't going to work because we've seen it so many times. So why would you do that? So therefore, we need to understand what really happens. So we're going to aim down the right again. We're going to feel the handle and the body move around to the left. We're going to catch it late in the arc. And then we're going to hit a beautiful little draw. And that, my friends, I think you'll agree, is good coaching. You have a great day out there. If you've liked the video, do like it, share, and subscribe while you're here. I want you to play the very best golf you can. We will, I promise you. Take it easy.